You hear about people losing weight all the time. They seem to be all around you, but you are not losing weight. You're not reducing body fat. The scale is not moving. And you're wondering why. Well, after 20 years in health and fitness industry, I can tell you there are patterns. And when I had the fitness studio, I started suspecting that this is the case. I started observing women and how they think, how they speak, what they say about themselves and how their bodies react. And it wasn't until I started working one-on-one -on -one with people that we dug deeper into issues and things and discovered that behind it all is this one persistent belief that I see most women, if not all women have, that is preventing us from having the body we want or living the life that we want in different areas of our lives. And I want to address not only that belief today, but the things that actually develop because of that belief. And before I get there, I just want to quickly introduce myself. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex Vuko. Like I mentioned, I've been in health and fitness industry for over 20 years now. I've been overweight. I've been underweight. I've been injured. I've had hormonal imbalance. I had thyroid issues. I've damaged my body a few times. And I have found a way to balance them all holistically. I am super passionate about women and women's health. And my goal is to have women feel like they're at a 10 daily. Because when a woman recognizes her own beauty, she's unstoppable. So why don't you go ahead and press that subscribe button here below and join me on this journey of making you feel fantastic every day. Okay, so what is this one belief? Behind high stress, behind lack of sleep, behind eating processed foods, behind drinking alcohol is a belief that you're not worthy. If you don't feel worthy, if you don't feel deserving, you're not going to take great care of yourself. And here's how I'm going to prove that to you. Every time I've asked this question another woman, I got the same answer. And here it is. If you're struggling with your weight, if you are drinking alcohol, if you're not sleeping well, if you're trying to balance your hormones. The question that I want you to ask yourself is, if you felt worthy, if you felt deserving of all great things, if you felt true self-love and self-respect, would you skip a workout or would you work out regularly? Would you eat food that you know is not good for you or would you eat healthier? And the answer is always, yeah, I would actually take better care of myself. This is how you know that we need to work on that self-esteem or that belief to change it so that you can address things. Now, I'm not saying that hormonal balance isn't real. I'm not saying that hypothyroidism isn't real. All those things are real. But when we look into our lifestyle, which we're about to get into, it all relates to us not feeling worthy or deserving at some level. So let's address things from our lifestyle that start with that belief. It's, for example, not moving enough. Once again, we know we should work out, but we don't. And if you think about how humans lived for millions of years, they walked everywhere. They were active pretty much all day or a big part of the day. And nowadays, we, including myself, sit for the most part of the day. And Newton's first law of motion will tell you exactly how we do this. It states that the body at rest will remain at rest unless an outside force acts on it. And a body in motion at a constant velocity velocity will remain in motion in a straight line unless acted upon by outside force. Now I can tell you this can totally apply to humans because think about it. When you're laying on the couch, you really need to tell yourself, oh, I got to go. I got to get up. I got to do this. Otherwise, we would literally stay in bed or on couch all day. And we all know those people that are always doing something. You're like, how do you have that much energy? It's like my mother-in-law. She can't just sit still. And it's not about her productivity or having to always do something to buzz, not to think about things. It's just that she's always in motion. And she loves farming. She loves her little garden. She loves her little animals. And she stays active all day. And again, it goes back to what your body's used to. If you, let's say, work in an office or a desk job from eight to five, and then you're used to just transferring yourself to the couch from five to seven, the body's gonna want to stay at rest. So we really do have to be active, whether it's going to the gym, doing yoga, doing your workout at home, just walking around the block, just start taking one tiny step forward. Because again, that action will start telling yourself, I am taking care of myself here. The next thing that I wanna address that rises from that belief is eating too much processed foods. Once again, if we felt deep appreciation, gratitude, and love toward our body and ourselves, we wouldn't eat that much processed foods. And processed food is everywhere. You can go to Home Depot to buy hammer and nails and you're gonna find yourself with a bunch of sugar at the checkout. 
you have drive throughs everywhere. I get it. It's too easy to eat processed foods, especially if you've been sedentary all day. Now you're in front of the couch. It's too tempting to just click on that app and order that food that comes straight to your door because you want to move less. So again, addressing this and starting to treat yourself with love means giving your body nutrients that it needs, which also shows your subconscious mind, hey, I'm taking care of myself. I'm worthy. The next thing that happens in our lifestyle that I want to address that's based off of that belief is related to the one that we talked about, processed foods, and that is our gut health and inflammation. Because when we don't eat the right things, when we eat a lot of processed foods, because again, you have to think about how humans lived for millions of years. For millions of years, we lived eating fruits, veggies, meat, things that are natural to us. And then for the last hundred years, we have introduced so much processed foods that our body instantly creates inflammation in the body because it doesn't recognize what it is. Also, it gets our gut bacteria used to eating different kinds of foods. Therefore, it messes up our cravings, what we want to eat, and our body fat percentage because of that. It is insane just how much gut health affects how we think, how we feel, and how we act. Fixing your gut health can solve a lot of problems. Once again, if you approach that from eating nutritious food and telling yourself you're worthy and deserving, your gut health will feel differently and your inflammation will go down. But when the body is inflamed, it is not time to be healthy. It is not time to release body fat. It is not time to be in homeostasis. And all of these things also lead to insulin resistance, which is another thing that happens because of that belief. When we're insulin resistant, once again, our body's not producing enough insulin. Therefore, we have too much blood sugar. Therefore, we store too much body fat. It screws up our hormones. It screws up our thyroid and adrenal and pretty much everything in the body. And once again, when you start eating right and you start telling yourself you're worthy and that you're deserving and you start treating yourself better, you start exercising, you start eating the right things, your gut health starts changing, insulin receptors will start producing more insulin, provided you don't have an underlying issue. Another thing that happens because of that belief and because of these things in our lifestyle is slow metabolism due to too much dieting or too much trying to fix things without getting to the root cause. Now, I'll give you something to think about. You hear about slow metabolism a lot in the United States, but there's not nearly as many people that are overweight and obese in, for example, Europe. Why is that? Is it that Europeans have a better metabolism? No, it's that lifestyle changes and things that we do in the United States have led us to slower metabolism. That's the bad news. But the good news is if that's what led it to slow metabolism, that's what's going to lead it to a faster metabolism as well. Now, I'm not arguing here that some people have naturally a faster metabolism and some have slower. But if you feel that you do have slow metabolism, if maybe you see most of your family being obeyed or overbeast, I want to give you hope by telling you that you can change things in your lifestyle to change not only your metabolism, but your offspring and so on. Because what we eat affects our DNA. And when we change our gut biome, when we change how we eat, when we change our stress level, whether it's too high or too low, we actually pass that on through our DNA. And that's what changes our genetics. But again, that can be a good news or bad news. It's on to you to take that with you to say, hmm, maybe I'm not going to let my genes determine my or my offspring's future. So we're going to change a couple of things starting today. And again, one more thing that I see consistently showing up in our lifestyle due to that belief is lack of sleep. So what happens to most women is we're so busy throughout the day, we're taking care of our kids, we're running the household, we're working, and then when we get time for ourselves, we start scrolling on the phone. And what happens is that usually happens late at night when we know we should be sleeping, but we found a little bit of time for ourselves. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We know we should be sleeping. It's 1 a.m. We know we should be sleeping. It's 2 a.m. We know we should be sleeping. Well, it's 3 a.m. and we got to get up at 7. And when this happens consistently, we're chronically sleep deprived, which screws up your hormones, makes you want to eat more sugar, makes you want to stay on the couch and be lazy, and so on. So you do have to love yourself enough to give yourself time for proper sleep.
And it's really about reparenting yourself because that's what parents did when we were little, right? They told us when we need to go to bed, even though we wanted to stay up. They told us when it's the time to eat so we can get nutrients in our body and so on. So we have to be our own loving parent that's going to make ourselves go to bed at a certain time so we do get eight to 10 hours of sleep. Women need more sleep than men. Now, lack of sleep is very much related to high stress, but high stress can be a day-to-day -day thing. It can be due to your environment, or it can be because of past trauma. And once again, we have to love ourselves enough to change things around us and to heal ourselves from within so that we can lower our stress. Because high stress leads to hormonal imbalance. See, when your cortisol is high, it's lowering your estrogen. When your estrogen is low, it's lowering progesterone because they balance out. And when your progesterone is low, it's lowering your testosterone because it's a precursor to testosterone production. So you're going to find yourself putting on weight because of high cortisol and lowering your sex hormones, which are then causing more damage because low testosterone leads us to that laziness that we talked about wanting to stay on the couch. It leads to thinning hair. It leads to gaining weight for no reason. It also leads to thyroid issues and or adrenal issues as well. You can get adrenal exhaustion or known as adrenal fatigue because if you've been running on high cortisol for a long time your body simply cannot produce enough hormones as much as I love adrenaline, we all do because it gives us high energy. We're not meant to run on high adrenaline day in and day out. And again, we have to love ourselves enough to take action to lower our stress. One of the first things I do is suggest to my clients to meditate. And most of the time they will say, I just can't do it. I cannot sit there and not have any thoughts. And you got to learn to love yourself enough to make yourself do things that are good for you. And remember, it's easy to do things that are not good for us because of that instant and gratification. It's hard to do things that bring us joy and happiness and health in the long run. And it also goes to what your habits are because when you're not used to sitting down and meditating, your body and your brain are going to fight you on that. So it's on you to be that parent for yourself, to love yourself enough to say, we're going to sit down now and we're going to breathe for 60 seconds. Start with 60 seconds. No one's asking you to start with an hour meditation a day, but you have to love yourself enough to take that action, which in the long run is going to help you lower your cortisol. High stress also leads to emotional eating. And when we're eating out of emotions, we're not eating for joy. What we're trying to do is get high from that sugar so we're not feeling the feeling that we're trying to avoid. Think about it. When you're eating out of emotions, you are not eating out of mindfulness. And believe me, I'm not here to judge you. Been there, done that. I had a binging disorder and I did not even enjoy my food when I would sit down to eat. It was about eating as much as I can, as fast as I can. Once again, when you start eating nutritious food that's been around forever, it's going to prevent you from overeating, especially if you take your time to eat it. We're meant to sit down. We're meant to enjoy our food, but high stress is not going to allow us that. We have to change that belief and love ourselves enough to do things for us, to show us that we are worthy and deserving. And high stress also leads to alcohol. This is also related to I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving, therefore I'm going to self-sabotage. Alcohol damages your whole body. It affects your brain, it affects your liver, it affects your heart, and it won't let you reduce body fat because when you drink that alcohol, your body stops burning body fat until that alcohol is out of your body, which means let's say you had two glasses of wine. Well, after you drink that wine, your body stops burning body fat for the next 24 to even 48 hours. You could be going on a no eating fast after that and still not drop a pound. This is why you want to ask yourself, why are you drinking in the first place? Are you trying to self-sabotage? Are you trying to avoid feeling a feeling that you're not comfortable with and you don't know how to process? Is this how your family has done things all the time? Is it truly purely a social thing for you? Well, at that point, it's asking yourself, if I quit drinking, are my friends going to support that? or pressure me into drinking. That's going to tell you a lot on what kind of friends they are. Once again, we choose everything in our life based on the belief of what we're worthy and deserving and where our standards are. Now, obviously, there are other things such as hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's and PCOS that are preventing women from losing weight. But even in those cases, I would ask you to dig deeper into how you truly feel about yourself. I'm not saying that this is always the case when it comes to physical issues, but I am saying it's worth looking into. 
And let's face it, it is the hardest thing to address. It is the hardest thing at time to love ourselves because we judge ourselves the most. We always say, if I talk to someone else the way I talk to myself inside my head, we would never be friends. But I'm here to remind you, you are with yourself 24 seven. So wouldn't it make the most sense to work on that relationship the most? Because if I had to be with someone 24 hours a day, I would have to make sure that we are getting along or this is going to be a very bumpy ride. So maybe you weren't taught to love yourself. Maybe you have past trauma that you have never addressed. Maybe you're afraid to address certain things. Maybe your stressors are in your environment and it's going to make you question things on a deeper level. But sis, I'm here to tell you it will be worth it because that means you are questioning the root cause. You are changing things. You are consciously choosing who to be around. You're consciously choosing to leave or stay. You're consciously choosing to treat yourself like a queen. You are consciously choosing to tell your subconscious mind, hey, we're worthy. We deserve this and we can have it all. And again, I'm not saying hormonal balance isn't real. I'm not saying that some things don't feel physically happen. What I am saying is that most of these things happen because of an underlying belief that is worth questioning 100%. Because girlfriend, you are deserving. You are worthy. You can feel great in your body.